Okay, so we have two position time graphs here. The one on the left has, um, well, two unique slopes, and the one on the right has a continuously changing slope. For both of these position time graphs, we're going to construct the corresponding velocity time graph and acceleration time graph. Now, the way we go from an acceleration time graph to a velocity time graph is by looking at these slopes. Our definition of velocity is the slope of a position time graph. Now, this can be calculated as change in position over the change in time, assuming the slope is constant, which does apply for those two regions of the graph on the left. However, for the graph on the right, there is no region where the slope is constant. So at best, this calculation of velocity would be an approximation. Because of that, this right here is what we say is the average velocity. It is not an, a calculation of the instantaneous velocity, which can only be determined by looking at the slope of a position time graph at that specific instant in time. But we can set it up and get a pretty decent look here. So for the left graph, our position time graph has a positive slope in the first region. So I'm going to be setting up a positive constant velocity for every point before that vertical line. And then after that vertical line, it's a constant slope that is very, very negative, and it's way steeper than the first part. So I'm going to say it's an even greater velocity, but in the negative direction. The way that I am representing that is by showing the distance away from the time axis as getting larger. Now, whenever I see this vertical line on one of these graphs, I usually associate that with being a way to help me out to see that there are two distinct regions. I can apply that logic to the right position time graph. I do not see a vertical line that bisects, trisects, or whatever the graph. So what that means to me is this is a continuous motion. I need to figure out what that velocity is going to be. So to do that, I'm looking at the slope. And a decent way of looking at the slope is by looking at tangent lines. A tangent line at the beginning would be a horizontal line. So that's a velocity of zero. Later on, a vol tangent line would be a positive but steeper slope. And then towards the end, positive but even steeper. And because I'm assuming this is constant motion, I'm just going to be drawing a linear relationship between velocity and time that is continuously increasing. So those are the two ways that we can construct velocity time graphs from position time graphs. If we have that vertical line that helps us out to know that there are two distinct regions, we can use that to our benefit, particularly if those two regions are going to be nice linear relationships on the position time graph. It's very easy to say it's a constant velocity. But if it's not a constant velocity, like the one on the right where the slope's constantly changing, as long as there's no vertical line bisecting the graph, Feel free to assume it's going to be a constant motion for these problems. Now, this second of the graphs we need to construct is the acceleration time graph. Our acceleration is going to be defined as the slope of a velocity time graph. And while we are seeing horizontal or linear relationships, acceleration can be calculated as change in velocity over change in time. But that can be limiting, kind of like what we saw with our velocity calculation above. This really applies to the average velocity and the average acceleration, just by relying on these equations.
That's why I prefer us to talk about it in terms of our definitions rather than equations. Our definition of velocity is the slope of a position time graph. Our definition of acceleration is the slope of a velocity time graph. The two equations that are currently written on this page are ways for us to calculate those in very specific situations. So if we apply that to the leftmost graph, the velocity time graph has two distinct velocities, but within their respective time, er time regions. Neither of them are changing their velocity. So both of them have an acceleration of zero. And because this velocity time graph instantaneously changes from a positive to a negative velocity, we didn't connect them because we didn't necessarily know what was happening there. There might be some small discontinuity in the slope there. That's why you might notice I'm leaving a small gap directly at the line because I really don't have a way to explain that at this point. Now, for the graph on the right, we don't need to worry about any changing acceleration because looking at that velocity time graph, there's just one single continuous slope. That slope is positive. So my acceleration is positive. So once again, to summarize what we did, going from a position time graph to a velocity time graph, you use our definition of velocity, which is the slope of that position time graph, and then just plots the velocities. If it's straightforward with linear relationships on the position time graph, like the graph on the left, it's a nice horizontal constant velocity in each of those regions. If it's a changing slope, like what we see on the right for the position time graph, then the velocity would be changing accordingly. Just focus on the slopes. Same thing going from velocity time to acceleration time. Acceleration is the slope of a velocity time graph. So just look to see what the slopes are. If the slope is zero, the acceleration is zero. If you have a positive slope, your acceleration is positive. If you have a negative slope, your acceleration is negative. Focus on these definitions and make sure that we are critically looking at each of these three graphs as we go through them stepwise, and then they should all align with one another.